We've all heard of software and got apps on our phone, but what really is software? Let's find out. We have a look at what is software and application software. Also, in part two, we'll have a more practical look at popular business applications, such as the Microsoft Office applications for spreadsheets, word processing, and presentation. So let's start off with what is software? Well, software is a set of instructions and data that tell a computer what to do. So we write in instructions in a language similar to one that we understand. Now that's converted into a language the computer understands, these zeros and ones. And then the computer can understand them and turn them into actions. Now we can split software into two types. We have system software, which is like what you've got on your device already when you receive it. So on your computer or your phone, the software is already there. And then phone apps or application software on your computer, you add on. So your system software is like your operating system and your utility programs that manage and maintain your computer. Let's have a look at application software. Software that's made for a specific task to do something on a computer. So we have our application software. Now that's run by loading into memory and then the system software, like the operating system, then runs a program. And we can use the hardware with the input and output devices to see what the task is, if you like. So we might use a keyboard and the mouse for input. We might use things like your monitor and your speakers for output. So we have these programs, and there are many, many, many commands in this binary code, these zeros and ones. And they're electronic signals that are flowing through billions of very tiny little circuits. That's how your computer works. So this application software, these are programs, a collection of many commands, but when they're run, perform tasks on the computer. So let's have a look at the types of application software. You'll probably be familiar with these. Obviously we use the web quite a lot and we use that through web browsers. Many of you play games. Also more serious we have business software. So the most popular applications for business would be things like word processors, spreadsheets, databases, etc. So we have an application software or apps on phones as well. So what type of apps are there on your phone? So we might have social networks, apps for entertainment, communication, even education, health, or watch videos, play music, email, texting, calculator, calendar, translation. And obviously we still use web browsers and games. On your computer, you may have software already on there, things like Notepad, maybe even antivirus software. You can also download free software, such as programming languages like Python, for example. We have multimedia, things for video and audio, uh, communication, social media like Line and WhatsApp, and we have business software sometimes packaged together in what's called suits. So for example, MS Office, we're very familiar with, many people use, and also Adobe have many products, for example. So web browsers, you may be familiar with many, or you may stick to one web browser you use most of the time. Uh, software such as Firefox and Opera, Edge, which is Internet Explorer, Safari, Chrome. There are others as well. When we use files, we give a file a name. Now, the computer knows that file by the name and its extension. So we have this dot and then some letters after to tell the computer what type of file it is. So for example, if a file finishes with .txt, it's a text file. We have PDF files. We have image files such as GIF and JPEG, audio files, video files like mp4 and if you see .exe that's a program that will run if you click on it. So these are file types. 
multimedia we have many different software we can use for editing publishing or authoring or even for design from images photos videos audio communication software we have messaging email via web browsers as I said before line whatsapp blogs voice over IP such as Skype and video conferencing so we have different types of apps uh, for communication we have many web based software now and also for personal use for use at home education finance even maybe tax or design so we have these different types of applications used for business to help our efficiency in work we can think of different applications such as word processing and spreadsheets we can also think of the different departments and each type of department will have its own type of software so HR, IT, engineering, manufacturing, customer service all have their own specific software for their office so let's look at office so business application software we're going to use Microsoft Office applications to show you the various types so let's start with word processing software so word processing software we can create edit print and save documents now these documents are things like letters and forms and reports so this is faster and easier than using a typewriter or even writing by hand and most popular is Microsoft Word spreadsheet software so here we can also create edit print and save documents but this is different we kind of have a table with cells and this is used really for for numbers so for finance and accounts and the example from Microsoft is Excel presentation software we can also create edit print save documents but we use a slideshow for presentations so PowerPoint is very popular there is database software we can create edit print and save documents but here we are storing data in a structured way so it's stored in a set way using tables and then it can be retrieved easily so it's a way of storing data and accessing that data and it's called access the database management system from Microsoft so let's have a look at these applications we start off with word processing with Microsoft Word so when we open it up we'll get this empty page and we're going to look at what these menus and these shortcuts at the top mean so we get some text from the internet this is from a YouTube web page we're going to put that into our document and we're going to start off by formatting the text so if you look at the top we have paragraph and we click the little shortcut and here's some uh, options for spacing so at the moment it's got eight points after so we want to get rid of that to zero so you can see how it's changed all the text we've got line spacing if we double then you can see we have double lines so there's like a line between the text we have 1.5 lines so it's not so much spacing but still spaced and then we have single so there's no spacing between the sentences we can change what the text looks like so here we can use the shortcut B for bold and then the size of the text you can see we have a drop down list so we can make the headings bold for example there's a better way of doing this which we'll show at the end of the video but for now let's just change the headings to the different sizes and make them bold so what else can we have a look at so the text we're going to highlight this paragraph and you can see this justification the first one justifies the text to the left the third one to the right and this one says justify if we click that shortcut 
we can see that it justifies the text. It moves it to the left, to the right, or even centers. In our web page, we can see bullet points. We can do this in Word. We select our text. You can see the shortcut at the top for bullet points. And if you don't like the spacing, I tend to use the ruler. So here you can see the dots are nearly at the beginning of the line. So if we want to move that, we can use the ruler, for example. So have a look at the ruler at the top and see how I'm moving them over. Now there's two, the top one for the dots and the bottom one for the text. So let's move down. Is there anything else we need to change? So we want some lines in between the paragraphs. We can just press enter. We can do that. These two lines should be numbered. So we can click on the numbers by the dots at the top. And if we want to move those, we can use the ruler as well. So that's a bit more neater. So is there anything else that we can do? Let's have a look at how we can change the text. We've used it bold before. Now I stands for italic and U for underline. We can change the color of the text. You can see these different colors in this drop down menu. And if we go back to the B, I and U, we toggle these off. We have different fonts. You can see this drop down menu for the different types of fonts which change how the text looks. And the size we've already looked at before, you can see here in this drop down menu. So what about the menus at the top? Let's have a look. Let's try, we have cut, copy, and paste. So if we copy, then paste, it copies the text and makes a copy somewhere else. If we cut, it removes the text first and then replaces it somewhere else. So it moves it rather than just copies it. Now we can use shortcuts rather than these. Uh, we can use keyboard shortcuts if we want to uh, copy text, for example. So we can use Control and C. I'm just going to make that bigger. If you have a look at view, there are different types of views of the document. So we can zoom in, for example. So zoom in to 200% so we can see the text clearer. So if you press Control plus C on your keyboard, that will copy text. Control X will cut text. Control V will paste text. And Control A will copy all. So you see there I can press Control A and it, it selected all of the text. So we can click on text to select it. We select one word or a whole paragraph. And here we're going to select and just delete. So you can see the menu items at the top. So click on home to get the normal view. And here we're going to open the file details and we're going to use save as. Now we give the file a name and then we choose where to select save that file. You could see this red line, so that's a spelling mistake. So we put a gap between YouTube and this. And you can see in our menu we've got review. So you can you can check for spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes by using the review menu option. So here it says it should be a question. So now that's changed the errors. We can go back. So we have a look at our top. We've got find and replace, so we can look for text. We've got these options we'll look at again. We've got justify, we've done, we've done the fonts, and we've done copy and paste. Insert, you might insert a table or a picture. Design, not really used that much, as is layout, unless you want to change it to a landscape, as you see here. So if we have a look in that, as in the view, maybe we can see that better. You can see that we have portrait and landscape. So they're different layouts. The only other thing you might use here perhaps is columns. 
um, if you wanted to have say for example two columns you can change the text you can see there one important thing at the back at the top there we can see is undo so if you make a mistake you can click undo other things like mailing and review you're not really going to use that much and I've shown you view you can have 100% zoom one page multi page so let's go back and close that and then it asks if we want to save it so we do and that's our example now let's have a look at again about how we could change the headings so here we're going to use these um, settings at the top so we've got these different headings so we're going to use heading 1 heading 2 and heading 3 so the different levels of headings and we can see at the top it gives us these formats these preset formats now you may be thinking well I don't really want blue text but you can change that in a minute so let's just change so we have the heading 1 heading 2 and heading 3 and the advantage of this is that when you want to change these later you can change them all by using modify rather than change them individually which would take a long time for example if you had a long document so let's have a look at heading 1 so we can right click on heading 1 so let's go back to the top and we have heading 1 we right click you see modify and now we can change from blue we can change it to black we're going to change the font size and the different font use Times New Roman make it bold and there we go so that's our heading one there's only one heading at one at the top heading two we have two so we can modify that in the same way change the color the font and the size and make it bold exactly the same okay and you can see the second heading two changed automatically and heading three we see you can see we have four we can right click modify change that to black times new roman and bold we can ok there now if we want to change the text we can also change that we selected normal before now we can change it to maybe a different size times new roman and also we can change the format normally we would use paragraph we can use format paragraph in this setting and now in this example we're going to change it to zero after and then we'll get rid of that spacing so we can change all of those formatting uh, differences using those headings and shortcuts for spreadsheets we're going to use Excel so we start off with some data in Excel you can see that we have letters as columns we have numbers as rows and these squares are cells now in the cell we have a value you can look at the top and you can see we have very similar shortcuts to Microsoft Word um, but here we have numbers and they are in the cells you can see the values written in this top bar and we can use functions you can see here insert function or a formula so for example if we want to add up numbers we can use sum so here we're going to select the range of numbers we want to add up and there's the sum the total if we copy that cell and paste it now we have the sum of the numbers in the column D you can see the first one we have the letter E in sum from 4 to 11 and now in column D we have the sum from D to 11 D4 to D11 so what other functions there are many and many so for example we can have this count if so we want to say the range we have these cells of zeros and ones we just want to count the ones so we can say there's two so that counts if the number was one we can copy and paste that at the moment we haven't got any ones in this column C so we can change that one to a 10 in the formula bar you can see here and it says there are five values of 10 if we change that to sum if 
rather than count if, it would count up those tens, or sum up those tens, and give us the answer of 50. So there's an idea of what we can do with formulas. Now, we can use insert and charts to make a graph. So here, for example, we've got columns. You can see here we've got series 1, 2 and 3. Now, we only really want a mountain in this, so I'm just going to take off series 1 and 2. Actually, we want those headings. So let's take these out and add these headings. So we're going to start again. Sometimes it's easier to start again and change a chart. So here we've got the headings, go to the same chart, and then instead of series 1, 2 and 3, we've got level, series and amount. And we don't want level and series, we just want amount. So here we've got our um, chart, and at the top we can add a title. So here we've got the amount of items in different countries. So we can change our title, and then you see how we easily added up a chart. We can change colors, for example, and there's our chart from our data. For presentations, we use PowerPoint. To start off, we have one slide, and it says click to add title. So you can click and add your title. It also says click to add a subtitle. You can see here we can change our font and our size of our text the same as if we're using Microsoft Word. So you see these boundary boxes where our text are and we can use them to insert text to a slide. We have different types of slide with different areas for text or for diagrams. The standard one has a title at the top and then text in bullet points underneath. So we're going to use some slides from our um, video that we've already created just to show you some of the things that we use PowerPoint for. So here we might change our title and let's select the text and then we can use different size, we use even the different fonts. So once you select a font that will stay that font. So let's have a look here. We've got this box around the text. So how do we do that? When we insert a shape, we can insert a rectangle. Now that creates this rectangle. We don't want fill. We don't want it filled in. And we want the outline to be green. So we can change that. So you can see in these um, shape menu, we can change these different items we can change the weight to make the line bigger. We have design, we can change all of the slides so they have a certain design. So let's choose one, let's choose this design and now you can see every slide has that same design. We look again, transitions we don't really use so transitions between slides, animation so now you might want to make the text appear or disappear or, or do something to emphasize it. So this example makes the text grow. You can see we have many different options for entering, for when it removed. And if you want to see them, you can use the animation pane to see what the animation is. So that's in the animation menu. The slideshow actually shows you the slides in order as if you're presenting them. So you can start off the start off at the slide that you're at or from the beginning. Review you might use for spelling but not really that much. In view the slide sorter is quite handy to see an overview of all the slides and then you can copy, duplicate or delete. Duplicate is quite handy to keep the formatting and the design, for example. So if you want to have something that's very similar, you can use uh, Duplicate. 
So here we just copy another slide, duplicate it and put it at the end. And there we have another slide. So we have the slides on the left and a bigger picture on the right. We have our menus at the top, which we are used to. And we have our slideshow. Let's have a look from the beginning. So I can press down or next to move from one slide. You can see the animation and then we get to the end. So what else can we do? Well, in design, we can change the background, for example. So here we've just got a black solid fill. You can see the different types of gradients or texture or pattern. So if we want to change color, you can see here we have the color palette. We can change that to blue, for example, or purple, whatever color you like. So here we have our slides. We can go back to our slide show from the beginning. We can go through each slide. Remember our animation. We can also use diagrams in our slides. So for example, we have this picture. Now if we want to change this format, the style of the picture, we have many options. You can see here in the picture format menu, once we select the picture, and then we can look through the different types. So we select the picture and then that picture format menu appears. So we can go back to our home menu and we can see now we're pretty much finished. So we can save that and give it a name and place it where we want. And we're finished for looking at PowerPoint. The other main component in Microsoft Office is access that's used for databases. And that's a little bit more complicated, so we'll use another video to explain that by itself. Okay, that's it for this video, so thank you for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. See you for the next video. Bye for now.